Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. And today we're here with another make in our 12x12 series. So I do have a template, and yes, I'll put this up at the end. If you haven't already taken a screenshot by now, you can have a screenshot later on, I promise. This is the way I plan things out. This is going to be up there, and what I do is when I cut my pieces, I'll lay them on there so I know which piece is which. So that's just out of the way. Um, what am I using today? I'm going to be using a bit of Stamperia. It's from the Dream um, pad, and I'm using this one. Um, I try to find things that are not really directional. I know there's a little bit of wording on there, but I'm not that worried because I might be using that side of it anyway. Um, I like to make these out of double-sided paper or card, but you can make them out of one-sided as well. It's completely up to you. Um, because as we know, we will decorate them to within an of their life. So, um, what are we making? We're making eight pocket folds, and it takes an entire 12 by 12 to make one of these. And I'll talk you through it as we go along. All the measurements I've got are in inches. I don't work in centimetres, I'm sorry. And when I try and convert them, I get really confused between millimetres and centimetres. So please forgive me on that one. So, right, first of all, I need to do some serious amount of cutting. So, um, they isn't really a top or a bottom, but when I first start cutting, I'm probably going to try and keep the orientation of that as if it's legible. Now, I use a guillotine. I don't use a trimmer for no other reason than I prefer to use a guillotine. So please forgive the noise of the slicing and the dicing, but that's just, just what it is. Right, so first thing I need to do is I want to cut this down to 10 inches. So put it in, make sure it's got a straight edge. And I'm going to give it a half turn and I'm going to cut it to nine inches. So that's my main pocket fold piece, which you'll see referred to on the sheet when I actually show it to you. Now, when it comes to the wider strip we've just cut off, that wider strip is actually going to be cut into two four and a quarter inch pieces because this piece itself is three inches wide because it's the off cut from a 12. So I'm going to do four and a quarter and four and a quarter and that will leave me with a little piece which is one and a half inches which is exactly what it should be right before I go on to the next stage of this I'm gonna put thumb tabs and things in things just so I know which relationship they're in it's the way my mind works so I know these are going to be pockets I quite like that design so if it's at the bottom of the pocket that's fine I'm going to come in with a circle punch and I'm just going to pop a thumb tab in there, excuse the clicking noise, and I'm going to put those on my template so I now know what they are. This one, however, does not get a thumb template, uh, a thumb tab. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go in my corner puncher and I'm just going to round the corners because I think that looks quite aesthetically cute. My rounder. Sometimes doesn't work, but there you go. So again, I'm going to lay that on the template and I'll bring that template back in periodically so you can see where I'm putting stuff and what I'm going to do with them. Now, when it comes to this piece here, this is the piece that is 12 inches long and I believe it's two inches deep. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to cut four and a half, four and a half and a three. So because there's these on the ends, I'm going to actually keep those. So I'm going to do four and a half inches in one direction. I'm going to turn the card around because these are going to be side tucks on the front and back cover of my eight pocket mold, uh, fold. So I cut those two. So that'll give me both um, nice pieces to do. Now I want to make sure that I've got the stitching on the right side because again, I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a notch in there again. Sorry about the click. That's the way it goes. So that's that. That's that. These are really easy to do, by the way. Should you wish to use up um, spare 12 by 12s because you can always collage them and decorate them. Right. That will leave one piece, which is three inches by two inches. And all I'm going to do is exactly what I did with the other one. As I'm just going to round out the corners. Now, if you don't have a corner rounder, you don't, why is that clicking properly? If you don't have a corner rounder, you could just cut these at an angle or even leave them as you as they are. If you've got an envelope maker, um, 
one of those envelope scorer boards they normally have a punch on them as well so right put that to one all of the cutting is now done so that's my guillotine to one side let's clean the rubbish off there right let's pull this in so you can see exactly the pieces we've got so this is what I mean by when I'm actually working, I like to have a template down just because it keeps my head organized. I know exactly what I'm doing. So this is the main body of my piece. So I'm now going to come in and I'm going to do some scoring with that. So let's move this to one side so it's not in your way or in my way. Now, um, depending on what scoreboard you want to use, it's fine. There's no special specialness about it it's just a scoreboard i've got a couple of scoreboards from different companies i don't favor any it's what's ever in the top of the drawer if you don't have scoreboard but you have a bone folder if you put something like a bit of fun foam on your work surface or even maybe a book pages or something you put a ruler down and draw a line down you will get a groove so we're going to be working first of all with the main pocket fold piece now this one, we need to put the 10 inch measurement at the top. Okay, 10 inch measurement across the top. This is the nine inch measurement. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score a line two and a half inches from this end. And two, no, sorry, two and three quarter inches from this end and two and a half inches from this end. Okay, you'll see as I go along. So I'm coming along two and three quarter inches and I'm going to put a line down my card. Boom, that's that one done. Then I'm going to come in from the other end, which is one, two and a half. And I'm going to put a line in there. Now, if I want to work from the left hand side only, that's two and three quarters and that's seven and a half. I, my brain functions if I come from either way. I've also got what I'm choosing to be my outside surface pointing upwards. So I'm going to turn it a half turn, and as this is a nine, I'm now going to put a score line down at four and a half because I want a central fold. Now at this point, it's well worth saying that we're pushing the bone tool into the groove, so therefore we're making a valley. So we're compressing the fibers down into our pieces of cardstock or piece of paper. So bear that in mind because I will refer to it in about two or three seconds. So we've got our grooves and I was always, I always learned, I can't remember where I learned this one from, but I heard someone saying, if you create a valley, you then create a mountain from the valley. So valleys become mountains and by mountains, I mean, I fold it in half. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to score all of my marks, just running the bone folder along. I don't normally have a problem with um Stamperia cracking. Well, not don't normally. I don't think I've ever had a problem with Stamperia cracking. Um, it will depend on what, pa what paper pack you've got and what paper pack you favour or cardstock as to whether it's going to crack or not. Okay, so I've established the grooves in there. I'm going to keep my bone folder hanging around just in case I need it in a little while. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to fold it I've got one, two, three sections. I'm going to fold it like a book. So I've got the big squares here. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a thumb notch in there. Now, I would say that I'm not that pedantic about putting the thumb notches exactly in the middle. But as you know, I'm OCD, so I pretty much do care about that. So, OK, so we've got top, middle, bottom. Now, these score marks here, let's just establish those a little bit better for me. Um, I want to remove the score mark there and there. And the reason I do this is I find I get the, a better folder, a better flatter fold. Good grief, you can't say that three times, can you? So I'm literally cutting down the side of the score mark itself. Now, some people you will see cut in on a slight angle. That's equally as good. I just find that I, I like cutting just the score line out because if I cut in on an angle, what that eventually does, it means that I end up with um, a slightly narrower pocket and I just snip it off the outside and it's done. Do that from the other side as well. So I just need to pick this up, not the easiest to do in midair. Um, a lot of the time I will just use a craft knife to do this. I won't necessarily use a scissors, but I thought it's probably better to demonstrate it with the scissors. Um, for no other reason, I thought better to demonstrate it with the scissors. 
but uh, less chance of me slicing my fingers open, let's put it that way. And again, opening that out and just snipping that off. So our overall piece now is scored and I've cut the score lines out. And the reason I do that is because if I fold this up now, you will find it will flow, fold and lay very, very flat. If you'd have left the other gr groove lines in there, you find you might have some distortion or buckling. Okay, at this point, what I want to do is I want to find out if there is anything that I really like, like I like this stitching on the top. Mind you, to be honest with you, the pocket is probably going to cover it up. I also have wording there. Do I mind it on the side? I don't, but I'm going to cover it up anyway on this one. Now, when you've decided which orientation your pockets are going to be in, which they're here, um, try to do it so that the overlap has this edge downwards, because if that's the inside of your pocket, you might find ephemera will catch on there. So I tend to like to put one over the other so that when we do eventually, let's see if I grab the pocket, when I do put the pocket over the top, it conceals that join, yes, but it also means ephemera can slide in quite easily without snagging on anything. So now, the next bit is completely up to you. I'm using Art Glitter Glue today because that's my glue of choice for this operation. Um, up to you what you use. I'm going to put a line of Art Glitter Glue, or I would if it would come out my tip. Why are you coming out? Excuse me a minute. And it seems to be a little bit blocked. That isn't normal for my Art Glitter Glue to be blocked. There we go. A little bit of an air bubble, I feel. So I'm going to put a really thin line of art glitter glue just up that one edge. I'm going to come up and press it down and run my finger along just to wipe away the excess. I'm going to do the same on the other side. It's the way my brain works. I find if I do the left side and then the right side, I tend to end up with a more balanced piece or a balanced construction. So the only bit that's stuck is where the spine would be. Now, when it comes to these, these flaps that are folding over, I'm going to glue along the edge of this and the edge of that and down there because then I've got two lines of glue securing that. So first thing I'm going to do is put a line of glue along here. If my glue would stop bubbling. And I'm going to put a line of glue along the inside top edge of this one. And move that out of the way. And I'm going to come down that edge. And then when that folds over, it will completely seal that pocket for me. Um, it's good to know, double check that it's not sticking to anything else. Just going to repeat that process on this one. So along the bottom there, or along the top there, should I say. Along the top edge of this one. And I'm going to come down here and again press them in. The reason I like using Art Glitter Glue, it is a really quick grab in that it sticks not instantly but as close as it's going to be. So what I've got now is I've got a fold that has a pocket that's sealed at the bottom and another pocket that's sealed at the bottom. We're going to be adding more pockets to this obviously. However at this point I also like to check. Now I've got a little bit of an overlap there where maybe I didn't line things up. So I'm just going to come in with the scissors and just give that a little bit of a snip. You don't need to. It's just me being me. That one looks like it did it perfectly. So I'm not worried about that one. So next on my list is my inside pockets. Now remember, there's that ridge and the ridge is downwards. I'm going to choose my pockets. Don't know which one I'm going to put on here. I quite like the pink on that one. And I don't mind that being blue. I know that we're double sided. The colours are normally complementary to each other. I could do that, but I don't want it to be so uniform. So on this one, I've got it already cut. And I'm just going to come in. I'm going to run the glue along here. Along the side edge. Along the bottom edge. And along this side edge. Now we've cut these pockets smaller than this panel. So basically just try and centralize them on the panel. I've done it on purpose because I don't want the edge of the pocket blocking up anything in that join that I've spent the time snipping out. Um, also if I was to put this into a signature I would want that bit of extra space there anyway. So repeat that with this one. 
and out you come. It's a little hard doing this in midair, guys. So, but hopefully it's closer to the camera that way. Also, it probably doesn't help the amount of coffee I've already had this morning. That's probably a caffeine shake happening there, I think. So again, just pop that on there. Now it will seal quite quickly. I'm not worried about that. So now I've got four pockets. So I've got pocket there, pocket there, pocket there, pocket there. Now, when it comes to the smaller tags, I like to put the smaller, longer one down in this corner. And I like to put the fatter one in this corner. However, it depends on what the other side of your pieces look like. Like, this is what I plan to do. But to be honest, I like the fact that if I put that one there, I get the pink across there. And if I put that one there, I get the dots across there. Actually, I might... Ooh, decision time. I might put that there. That sort of balances out. And also, this likelihood I might decorate these anyway. So, right, coming in along here. Let's put my hand down here. Maybe I won't shake as much. I really do need to cut back on the caffeine. And a line of blue down there. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to pop that to the outside edge. Now I pop it to the outside edge of each of these inside pockets because obviously we're going to be loading these pockets, or you are when you've made these, and that means the bulk of the the ephemera won't be in the seam in the middle. It'll be on the outside, and I don't mind if it's slightly alligator mouth anyway. So, a line of glue down here, line of glue along there, and right back up the other side. Now, you can alter all of this around and do whatever you wish when you make it. This is just my method for making these, and I like the fact that I can do these, and then what I've done is I create loads of them, and then I put them in my stash. Now, we're looking at the front now, so that's the inside. This is the front and that's the back. I'm going to take my remaining two pockets and I'm going to put them either side of the center in whichever way I feel best. I quite like the pink on that one and I quite like the pink on that one. Ooh, or do I? No, I think I do. I think I like the pink on that one. You can see where thinking about where the stitching was going to be was important with this design, but it depends on each individual design you do as to what what options you've got as to what you wish to do. So again, a line along the top, a line down the bottom, a line at the side. I tend to hold it, the thumb in the thumbnail, in the thumb notch, purely because that reminds me not to glue where my thumb is. So it's just, just the way my little brain works. So now I haven't put it up close to that. I've given myself a little bit more breathing space. Again, coming in, repeating the process on here. Oh, the sun's coming out. It's a little bit unusual here in Wales. It's usually rain. So I put that one down. I try to balance them up, but it would be very rare you're going to see both sides of this at the same time anyway. So now you could have, if you wanted, distress inked every single piece of that, but I left that as was. So it's your option. Why can't I get the glue? No, there you go. So what we've now got is what I call an eight pocket fold. It's probably been done by someone else in another version. So I'm certainly not going to call it Kerry's eight pocket fold. So I've got a pocket here, which can be a tuck spot for anything. I've got a bigger pocket here, which could be for a journaling card or folded journaling paper. The same on the back, again, with a space here for more journaling card. And on the inside, I could have Let's see if I can find a bit. Uh, let's reach over and grab a bit of ephemera. So I've got something can tuck in there, something can tuck in there. Oops, something can tuck in there, something can tuck in there, something can tuck in there. And there, you get the picture. So you've got eight pieces. Now, the thing that's really nice about this is, yes, it's a nice standalone piece. So if you're someone who has an Etsy store or you're doing... Um, Patreon, stuff like that. These little things, if you put a few tags or bits of ephemera in, are a nice little thank you to your patron subscribers. If you're someone who runs an Etsy store and you're looking for a nice little gift to maybe send out as a thank you to those people who maybe um, purchase a higher end product or something, it's nice. I also like these because he's tucked into journals. Also, if you have a journal, one second, 
sorry about that, I didn't prep this. But, so say you've got a signature you're going to sew into a journal. You could take this very same thing and sew it into your journal. So when it's in the journal, you'd have that on one page and then you'd have that on the opposite page. Another thing you could do is this is quite a nice way if you're going away somewhere or you're going on holidays or take some ephemera with you. Just a little bit to help you along as you're using your traveller's notebook. Tuck it in there and you could even put a ribbon around it. You could even just use a paper clip. You could even use a little vintage clip. And I highly recommend decorate this as much as you like. Um, you're going to find the way I've designed it is all of the bulk is likely to be on these edges. So when you close it, there'll be no main stress on, on the spine. Let's take a little look at the template. This is where you can come in and do a screenshot and do a screenshot and all of that should help explain everything that I've done with the exception of where the score lines are, but you saw me do it. So it's just a quick rewatch on that. So there you go, you've taken a screenshot of that, I hope. And now the character of these will change as per the papers you use. So that's the one we did. Let's pull in a few more examples. This was another double-sided one. Of course, change the character. Um, this was a bit from a Christmas kit. So that was snow, but I thought that was quite cute as well. Um, again, a blue and white version. You might be seeing a theme here. Oh, this is the one I did. A little bit of vintage photo on there, just to show you that we'll define a little more where the tuck spots are. And then I went, I went completely rogue and used this double-sided paper, which was blue on one side and wood on the other side. Great for maybe a nature journal, something like that. So. So there you go. Hopefully you like that. That uses one entire 12 by 12 um, all, all the way through, no waste. And then you can put any amount of tags, tuck spots, maybe postage stamps, maybe stickers, whatever you wish in there. Great little thing to make for a stash. Use up those old pieces of 12 by 12 and have stuff and then come in. I mean, it could put lace down here. You could put wording down here. You could put little labels. You can do so much. I've just given you the base. You've got the imagination decorate it to your heart's content. So just for me, this is where I am. This is who I am. And this is where you'll find me. So until next time, this is me. I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Signing off. Bye-bye now.